Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this Williams Pat Hand pinball from 1975. If you have not seen our videos that we've done so far on it, go check them out. We did one where we showed the condition it was in. Wow, look how fainted, faded the pink is. Holy moly, I just noticed that. We did one where we showed the condition that the cabinet was in, and we worked through all of this stuff in the back, in the, in the bottom. We found a couple little issues, and uh, we showed how to, how to adjust relays. And then we did another video where we worked on the back box. And we did all this stuff in the back here, in the back box. And we showed how to rebuild a stepper unit, and we showed how to rebuild a score uh, a motor, a score wheel, I mean. It's not a score, that's a score motor. What do they call those? Score wheels, I guess. Drum units, that's what they call them. A drum unit. And that's as far as we got so far. So today, we are going to put the play field back in this baby. Look at it. It's sitting over there out of the way, being polite. It's waiting its turn. Well, we've done the, 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 the coffin. I'm starting to call the bottom cabinet the coffin. We've done the coffin. We've done the back box. Now we're going to do the play field. So uh, first thing I'm going to do... Let's pick that heavy sucker up and pop it back in the cabinet where we can get it up uh, off the ground where we can work on it a little bit. Um, it's not real heavy. I think they're about 40 pounds, but it just depends on how much stuff is hanging off the bottom of it, how much jewelry it has. So let's throw it up in here and take a look at it. Okay, so there it is. And people ask us, well, how do you know where to start? It looks a lot more confusing than it is. Once you mess with them a little bit, you kind of figure it out. So look, I took the wires off, and now it's even less confusing. So two of these go down to the bottom. These are Jones plugs, and it's how the bottom board connects to the play field. This other one that's loomed separately whoa, is like that because it actually goes up in the back box. And so we got to clean these Jones plugs. See that corrosion? What is that? Is that oxidization? I don't know. But let me show you something. Let me show you something. Okay, so you see how that looks. Now look at the other side. Unknown caller. See how it's not quite as bad on this side? I'll show you why after I see who the unknown caller is. This is a telemarketer. <laughs> but the reason it's worse on this side is because when it's mounted in the back box, that's the upside. So that's actually, a lot of that's just dust. Well, whatever. But the bottom's not quite as bad because it's down. And the other ones, they mount like this. So the top gets filthy. But the pins aren't quite as bad. They don't get as bad as that one that's facing up. But you still need to clean them all. So the way we clean them is we just use really light sandpaper and just get the grime off of it. Other people have other ways of doing it. Do your favorite way, people. Don't listen to how I say to do it. Do it the way that you think is best. Okay, I've been working and working and working. Now, some people have mentioned that you don't really want to get the tin off of it, so I try not to go too far, but some of the tin is off of it, people. Deal with it. It'll be all right. So we got it nice and shiny. Everything's cool. All of the crap is off of it. Now the actual female part of the socket, you can do the same thing if you have like a, you can get a gun brush actually that you, that you use to clean the barrel of a gun. You can get them at just the right size or it'll go down in there. I can't remember the size though. I would tell you, but then you'd go buy the exact size that I said and it would be wrong if I could just guess at it. So, but there is a, if you get an assorted kit, you ought to be able to do it. It's that size right there, okay? <laughs> I would say barely bigger than a BB, so I don't know what kind of gun would be that small, but a little teeny tiny bullet. That's smaller than a 22 or a 25 shell for, for show. And now this video will get demonetized because I'm saying the G word too much. But you get my point. It's, it's about the size of, if you take an ink pen, and take the uh, the cartridge out of the inside of it. It's about it's about the size of that. 
Okay. So we got those. We'll plug them in. I'll have to turn it off first. We actually have it on because I like how the lights blink. All right. So if you're, you should be following along at home if you're trying to fix one of your own. You know, I'm telling you how to do it, people. We're trying to save all of the pinball machines. So if you've got one that's broke, all you have to do is watch these videos and yours will get working too. Uh, so if you're following along at home, this is the next thing we're doing. We're going to plug those in and then uh, with the game off, I'm going to replace all of the light bulbs. So I'm, I'm going to throw all of them away. Now people have asked me, why do you replace all of them? Well, because we sell them, so it's like a reliability thing. You know, The bulb that's in it's probably 30 years old. They might keep working or some of them might die. So we're going to put brand new ones in them. Um, just so that we don't have to worry about it. Now, uh, if it's yours at the house, you might not care if all the bulbs are new. I mean, it doesn't really make them burn any brighter or anything. So uh, if you don't mind replacing them when they burn out, go ahead. Just replace the few that are burned out. Uh, but we're going to replace all of them. You can also put LEDs in yours if, you're want, if you want. People ask us about LEDs all the time because they, they run cooler and all that. That's true. Everything people say about LEDs is true. I just don't like them because they don't look original. I just like the original look. That's just my personal preference. But if you want to put LEDs in yours, go right on ahead. And if I ever get it, I'll, I'll pull them out and throw them in the damn trash. But uh, <laughs> it's not a it's not an irreversible mod or anything like that. I don't really like modding them at all if I can help it. So I, if it was up to me, I would have them pretty much how they were originally. I do a couple little things that are different than how they were originally, but not much. We get that too with people where they want us to put DC flippers on them. So the, a lot of the original EMs had AC powered flippers that are weaker than if they're DC powered flippers. I don't even know why that is. I guess maybe since the AC you lose half of the wave or something. I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure you engineers know better than I do, but the DC ones are stronger. This is a 1975 Williams, and if you look, that's a bridge rectifier. It does actually have DC powered flippers in it. They, they made some of the later EMs have DC powered flippers. This thing, the flippers are probably strong as hell. We're probably still going to uh, replace the plungers, but I'll bet these things will freaking slap. And that's what you want. Okay, so I'm going to plug those back in. I'm just going to go through. I'm going to replace all of the light bulbs. Uh, and as I do that, you kind of examine each socket as you're going just to see if any of them look like they have a problem. Sometimes they're uh, loose. And so what I'll do, nothing's plugged in right now, by the way. What I'll do is I'll spin them a little bit. So if you spin them and they're real loose, you might need a new socket. But usually you can spin them and they kind of get to a spot where they there's a little more resistance. What that means is in that spot, you've got a really good connection between this pressed on base and this metal bracket that it's on. That's how it gets its, its uh, power. So one of the wires is soldered to the bracket. You can see it there. And it comes up, and this is just press fitted on. So over time, they get a little loose sometimes. If you spin them, though, it gets it to a nice uh, a place where it makes a better connection. And I just do that with it off, you know. And then this line over here is the other one. You need to make sure it's not shorted out where it's touching the bracket, because then you're shorting both of your lines together and it'll blow the fuse. Um, Um, you can also, you can see how it kind of oxidizes the surface of the bulb. See how nasty that looks? So you can also take a small brush and kind of clean the pin in there a little bit. But usually you don't need to do that. If you get one that's acting up though, that's what it needs. If you get one that that's all loose and it's just wobbling and stuff, you need to replace the socket. But it's kind of a pain because you have to solder it on. Um... Usually you don't have to do too many of those, though. All of these look pretty good, so I, unless I uh, find one that's damaged or something, I can probably get away with the original ones. So I'll do the light bulbs, and uh, we'll see how that looks, and then move on to the next thing. Okay, I'm pulling light bulbs. Whenever you do these, you will find that the uh, there will be all kinds of soot from the bulb inside all of the inserts. Some of them will be worse than others. It kind of depends on how much the bulb was on. Um, and so you need to clean that out, or you'll see it whenever the uh, bulb lights up. You'll see this ring on the playfield. 
So the uh, easiest way to do it is just use like Windex and a Q-tip or something like that. I don't have any Q-tips here, so I'm using like a little tool with a paper towel on it. You just want to clean them, the bottom of the inserts. Get it all nice and shiny so that whenever the light comes through, it'll look nice and clean. Much better. Look at this. Somebody has written 20 and 40 and 15 equals 75. Plus two dollars and forty cents equals seventy-seven forty. Now that is a mystery, folks. Figure out for me why that is on there. Twenty, forty, and fifteen equals seventy-five. Plus two forty equals seventy-seven forty. What is the point of all that? Hmm. I can't figure it out. So I got all the light bulbs replaced. So next thing uh, is we're going to do all the switches, and then we're going to turn it on. Uh, we've got so you've got all the playfield rollover switches. You need to check all of them to just see if it's physically doing what it should. So when it rolls over to switch, it pushes a little leaf switch together. Some of them are double stacked like that. Just make sure both of them are moving, and you want to do it just like you did uh, the relays um, on everything else. When the long blade moves, when it touches the short blade, it should move the short blade a little bit. If it moves it a little bit, everything is great. So I'm going to do all those, and I'm going to clean all of these switches on these relays. So these relays are for like all of the, um, like the features of the game. So number one joker relay, two, three, four setup relay, double bonus relay, special relay. Uh, ace relay, king relay, queen relay, jack relay, ten relay. Sounds like it's going to be really fun. And then we finally found our hundred point relay and our ten point relay that I kept saying was in the back box, but they're not. And this is something to ace reset relay, and this is the advance relay and the bonus relay. So I thought the reset relay was under here, but I guess not. Um, and then we have this bonus unit, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six coils to mess with. So I'm going to start cleaning switches. You can use anything to clean them. We use like a really worn out file. You don't want to use anything super abrasive that's going to cut away the contact. That would not be good. But you can, uh, the, the trick that the old school repair guys used to say was to use a piece of a business card because you're just trying to get the dirt off of the, the contacts. But, you know, they were doing it on machines that weren't all that old yet. <laughs> so we used something a little a little stiffer. So I'm going to clean through all of the switches and then we can plug it in and see if the lights come on. I can do it now, but I want to clean the switches first so that I can trip some of these relays and see if it turns on the associated play field lights. All right, so cleaned all the switches. We haven't done the bonus unit yet, but it looks pretty good so far. Ah, it's not that bad, right? And we haven't done anything with the flippers. But they'll probably work how they are for now. So, But we're ready to turn it on. So let's turn it on and see if any of the light bulbs work. And we're finally to the point, well, maybe we should rebuild the bonus unit first. But we're about to the point where we can actually start the game and see if anything works. Okay, so we have some lights on. What am I hearing? Something's buzzing. Oh, it's the bonus unit. Hmm, not good, people. That should not be held in like that. Let me turn it off. So the bonus unit is stuck in. Which one would that be? That would be... It's the step-up coil. The bonus unit step-up coil is stuck in. So how do we figure out why it's doing that? Well, we look on the schematics. 
Okay, so here's how you track stuff like this down. So the bonus step up coil is always on. So if you look, so we're following this double line down. There are two ways it gets power. One way is down here through the advance relay. I looked at that. The advance relay, these two uh, switches on the advance relay were not connected together. And the advance relay was not on. Okay, so the other way that it gets power coming down is through this. It says bonus unit zero position. So basically the, the bonus unit resets back to zero, but you start the game, I guess, with a thousand points on the bonus, or a thousand on the bonus, or whatever it is. I haven't even looked at it yet, but it's a thousand probably. You start the game with a thousand points, so it resets it back to zero, and then when it gets to zero, those two lines are shorted together, and they're in uh, a series with a switch on the motor. Switch 6A, uh, switch, or cam 6 uh, on the, on the switch C. So if you go down to here, we're back over to the score motor. There's the cam 6. Switch A says pulses bonus step up A. Okay. So then I started thinking, I didn't hear the score motor turn around. So if this... If this uh, switch is stuck on the high part of the cam, the switch will be closed the whole time. It needs to turn around until it falls down into that valley on the cam. So I, I didn't hear the score motor uh, turn or anything. Did you? Hmm? Did you hear the score motor turn? Okay, so I've still got the game on. The score motor is not doing anything. So uh, usually if you turn it a little bit, by turning it out of one of these valleys, these uh, valleys, I don't know which one, but on one of them, whenever you turn it, it, it makes that switch connect. See the grease all over my hand? It makes that switch connect and it holds the motor on itself. So it, it, will, it will never move just a little bit. If you turn it a little bit, it makes a switch connect and it turns around until it gets to the next valley and stops again. Because when it gets to that valley, that switch opens. Okay, so this thing is dead. So here's the motor. Over here is a service connection. So you can pull this pin out and put it over here so that it's turned off. Service jack on and off. But look, the wires broke off of it. So that wire goes back and it just goes to the motor. So I need to resolder that wire on that jack there where it broke off. And that'll get our service motor turning again. I was able to get the coil not to pull in by just moving the spider up off of the first uh, uh, rivet. But watch what happens when I get back down to the first rivet. Well, I must have moved the cam enough that it doesn't do it. There we go. See, it's locked on. It's trying to pull it in and move it forward. But it, it when the when it pulls it in, let me move it off of it. You see how when I moved it off, it made it actually move. When the, when the I'm trying to explain all this stuff when I think of it, in case it'll help you with something. It's not this coil moving in that moves the gear. See, watch the stuff there. Okay, so I'm all the way in. So now if I stay like this, the gear will never move because it's letting go of it that that moves the gear. So if you get something locked on, a lot of times it'll just be sticking where it is and you, it makes it harder to even tell what's locking on. But it's all working fine. My whole problem is I just need to get that wire back on it so that the score motor turns around to its home position. Okay, got our wire soldered back on there. Let's try it out. Voila. No stuck on coil. We got our general illumination on the playfield up and running. We got our five ones in the middle. 
lit up. None of these are lit up though. And none of those. So let's see if uh, if I hit these relays, let's see if it makes other stuff light up. What do you think? Whoop. Hmm, what, what was that one? Yeah, there we go. So it's turning these off. I'm trying to not get my hand uh, broke by the... <laughs> That's a pretty hefty coil there, people. If it decides to reset, it might reset me. Alright, so those do those, but they didn't light up the other ones. Let's see what this does. Well, that load up that. That's the special relay. Oh, and a couple of bulb there. Damn, I don't think I changed that bulb. Alright, so it lit up both of those. Let's see what this wants to do. The double bonus relay. Oh, okay. How's that one? Working right through it, people. Da, 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 da. That was the number four Joker relay. Oh, no, that was the setup relay. It's a trap. That's the number four Joker relay. Or. I don't know. I'm just hitting relays, people. We've got all four of those lights back there. All the ones on the bottom. Now remember, we haven't done anything on the top of the play field yet. I wonder what makes these come on. Hmm. Must be one of these. Let's try it. Shall we? That don't do nothing. Oh, that's the that's the hundred and the ten point relay. That don't do nothing. There we go. Huh? Okay. So all of our lights appear to be working, people. What do you think about that? The ones in the middle, I guess, turned themselves off because of these relays. But if this were to do this. All right, all right, all right. And then our bonus would be this bonus wheel. We haven't rebuilt the bonus yet. So see how the light is kind of iffy? That's because I haven't cleaned these rivets yet. When I clean those, that will make it less iffy. And when I get to one, I know one will be fine, but when I go past one, it should step it back up. Oh no, it won't without the score motor turning. So that's the home position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, yeah, so that definitely needs cleaned up a little bit. But. I think we got all of our lights working. And uh, I cleaned all the switches, so we're going to work on this bonus unit to get that more reliable. Then we're going to work on the flippers, and we'll be done with the underside of the play field. So we're going to rebuild the stepper unit to make sure all those lights light like they should. Now, it's uh, worth noting, too, that you know it's not just the, the lights. The stepper unit doesn't just make the lights move, it also is used whenever the uh, machine is counting down your bonus. So at the end uh, of the ball, it counts back and uses some of these rivets in sequence with the scoring uh, relays to give you the actual scores. So if this isn't clean, you also won't score. It won't just be that the lights don't work. So I've removed the uh, little uh, spider off of it. 
And what I always do is I just lay it down exactly how I removed it off. Make it real easy for me to pop it back on there. And I'm going to clean these rivets just like we did in some of the other videos you've seen us do. We're going to sand these slightly with very mild sandpaper. You don't want to go crazy on it because you don't actually want to take any of the, um, the brass. I guess it's brass. Is it brass? You don't want to take any of the surface of the rivet off. If you, I've seen them before where it's almost always all worn away, um, which is bad. If you look, you can actually see that they um, protrude above the Bakelite board, and you can see the little hole next to it is actually a lot smaller. So the rivets are are uh, much larger than the actual holes that they go through. So we're going to just sand it, just to scuff it up and get it nice and shiny again. Um, and that usually gets it where it makes good electrical uh, contact whenever the the disc is touching it. So as you saw in an earlier video, the uh, uh, the thing was already working. It just it wasn't making good connection on the rivet. So I put a little bit of oil on the shaft because it's a it was a metal shaft going through a metal bearing. If it's metal on metal, you definitely want to use a little bit of oil. Um, and then on the actual uh, bake. A light board, bake light, bake a light board. I always use this stuff. So you might want to buy you some of that. If you do, use our Amazon link. Um, and uh, thank you, by the way, to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. That's pretty cool. We appreciate it. The ones from International are starting to work too. I've noticed that. There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, somebody uh, just bought something in Canada, like it was a. Uh, some kind of huge vacuum set or something, and we get a little commission because he clicked our link before he bought it. So we appreciate that up there in Canada, whoever did that. Uh, so thank you to everybody that's been doing that. But uh, anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. It was, so we put a little bit of it on there, you see. You don't want to go crazy with it. It just helps it uh, rotate around. Now, you don't want to use just anything on this. Vaseline might not be a good idea. The reason that stuff works is because it's dielectric. And uh, somehow dielectric stuff will insulate so that the two rivets don't electrically connect to each other that are next to each other. And But it also conducts. So I don't know how that works, but uh, the rivets on the actual spider, it, it helps them conduct. And then it also keeps it from, if you put just a regular oil on it, it'll actually short out the ones next to each other because it will conduct. Don't ask me, folks. I don't know why it does that, but all I know is that Super Lube stuff is fantastic on these. This is what I use. Okay, so we are at the home position, and when it gets to the home position, it should open up that little switch. So let's come off of it one. And now, it's closed. So that's how you want it. Just poific. Poific. Okay, so... Uh, one other thing to, to mention, there is this one wire here. I guess those were originally white wires. And they have taped them to this other wire that is fastened down here on this screw. And so I've done extensive research. And it looks like originally those two wires had a little eyelet, which may or may not still be in there. And it was attached to that screw. It attaches to the ground, which is basically the, or not, maybe not the ground, but it attaches to the, the metal of the um, bonus unit, which attaches to uh, some of the fingers on the spider. And so um, it's supposed to be like that on that other screw, I believe. But it looks like at some point, uh, it stopped making good contact. The um, the two brackets there weren't connected to the metal as well as they should because that hole is a little wallowed out. There's a word you haven't heard in a while. Wallowed. So what they did was they attached a wire and they ran it down and connected it to the other foot, the other bracket, so that it would make better contact. And it's working. They did a pretty good job. I know a lot of people don't like electrical tape, but, you know, hell, if you're wrapping up something big like that, electrical tape's the way to do it. It's working. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. So let's see if we're any better on our lights. One position. Two position. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, and it turned on all these too. Da 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 da! Boy, we got a lot of lights on right now, people. Now watch what happens whenever you hit this one. Oh, if I can hit it. It only goes back one step at a time. So why is that? Why doesn't it just reset back to the, to the beginning? It's because it has to count it each time. So it goes back one step, score motor turns, it makes the relay fire off, give you a thousand points, and it goes back one more step, score motor turns, it makes the relay fire and give you another thousand. That's how it uses the, uh, that unit to actually give you the bonus instead of just uh, displaying it on the light bulbs. Okay, so you know what? We are up to the flippas. Let's mess with the flippas a little bit. What do you think? Oh, by the way, I should mention, I screwed up earlier. I said that these have DC flippers. They do not. They do not have DC flippers. I looked on the uh, schematics and they have DC pop bumpers. So the two pop bumpers and the kicker here, there's only one because remember the pop bumpers are down low, are what is DC. The flippers are not DC. They are the old school AC flippers. So I was wrong about all of that. But we'll see how it plays here in a little bit. Okay, so on the flippers, what I'm going to do is, I'm going, I don't even know if I've got these links. I think I might. This is a Williams, so I probably do. I'll see if I've got new links. Uh, plungers here. Um, usually, oh, we're going to get a good video out of this one. Uh, usually, you, you don't have to replace everything. You just have to replace some of it. A lot of people will replace the coils. You don't usually have to replace the coil. Now, since I said that, I'll have to replace all three of them, but... Usually you don't have to replace the coil. You have to replace the nylon sleeve in between that the plunger runs in and out of. Usually you have to replace the plunger. If you look... See that wobble right there where, it, where the link hits the plunger, how it can move a little bit? You don't want much play there. That there is kind of borderline. It would probably be all right. Uh, but often that's where your your uh, your wear is in the in the uh, flippers, and you need to replace that for sure. Sometimes you have to replace the coil stop down under here. We'll look at it whenever we get it out. And then on this particular one, looky here, the bushing is broke. Got to replace that bushing. So if you need just parts. You can get those from the, uh, a lot of places, but our favorite place is the Pinball Resource. We don't know those guys. They don't pay us to tell you that, but we we uh, we really like them. They do. They kind of specialize in EMs, although they do do they do do solid state stuff too. Um, but they're they're the the kings of electromechanical pinball machine parts. They've got everything, and they've had stuff reproduced over the years. They also have the Gottlieb license, so they have a lot of licensed parts uh, that they've made over the years. But anyway, they sell just parts, so you can get just that bushing and just that plunger and just a nylon sleeve and just the coil stop if you want, or they sell the whole freaking thing. So they'll show they'll sell you all this stuff if you need to. Oh, sometimes the end of stroke switch needs to be replaced too. If it's badly pitted, that one there it looks like it's gonna be alright. Um, but check out the pinball resource, you can get all your parts there, or you can just get a flipper rebuild kit there too. They're usually not even that much money. Thirty, forty, fifty dollars, something like that. But what do you do on one like this where there's three flippers? Huh. I'd have to get a flipper rebuild kit and a half. I'll bet they have a provision for that. I probably run into that problem all the time. They're pretty smart guys and gals over there. Okay, so uh, I'll take one of these flippers apart and we'll start uh, swapping some of the parts on it. So here's the old coil stop we took off. Sometimes if your plunger isn't hitting the isn't hitting it nice and square, you'll get a noise, you'll get a lot of buzzing and stuff like that. And sometimes the end of it will get mushroomed up around the edge there. So I've hit it with a file and cleaned it up a little bit, made it a little better. You can get a new one too, like I said, I use it four or five dollars. Sometimes you'll get these and this entire stud will break off. See how it's riveted in? Uh, that whole thing will be broken off and inside the coil sleeve. So of course then you need to replace it for sure. Um, and the old metal sleeve that was in it I took out and replaced with a nylon one. The metal one was stuck to the, the uh, uh, coil stop that I was just messing with. 
This plunger, I'm going to show you again the play in it. It's got a little bit of play. I just compared that to a brand new one, though, and a brand new one has about half that play. Uh, so I think we're going to see if these are strong or not. If they're strong, we're just going to leave them. If they're not strong, we're going to order new uh, new plungers for it. I've got some, but I don't have. The, they're not the right ones for a Williams. I've got some Valley ones. So the new ones have just a little bit of play in them. Um, but it, we're, we're on the borderline with, with if that's too much play or not. Um, and then sometimes, too, your the end of your plunger there will have the end of it mushroomed up so that it doesn't smoothly travel in your uh, coil. By the way, you should never oil those. If you put oil on that stuff, you're kind of asking for a fire. Don't do that. Don't put oil on the plungers on any of this crap, people. Okay, so, uh, oh, and the end of stroke switch. You gotta get that just right to where it stays closed almost the whole time and then opens right at the end. So that's probably pretty good. You want it to open maybe a little less than an eighth of an inch, something like that. So I'm going to uh, replace the, you know, check out all three of them, replace the sleeves, check out the, uh, check the um, plungers for wear, and check the end of the plunger to see if they're mushroomed out, clean the end of stroke switches. And then you know what time it will be? It'll be time to test it out and see if it'll start up a game or something. So I replaced the sleeves and all three of them worked on them. And one thing I noticed is this bottom one, the third flipper, it's had something done to it. So if you look, it's out of line. See that screw hole there? It was originally farther over that way. So they must have done that for some reason. Somebody moved it at some point. And I'm sure they had a great reason for it. But uh, it's not quite lined up exactly like it should be. But it'll still work. The only thing that it, it does is it makes this uh, pawl be slightly, I mean the, the link be slightly different. Um, the flipper can still be rotated where it's actually at the same angle on the play field and all that. So for some reason, though, they took it from that and then moved it slightly. I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. But I'm going to leave it because it might have been fixing some problem. Maybe there was a hole in the play field that was wallowed out or something. Didn't I already use the word wallowed in this uh, series of videos? I think I did. Okay, so I've done everything I can think of to do on the cabinet. I mean, on the the coffin. I've done everything I can think of to do in the back box, and I've done everything I can think of to do on the bottom of the play field. So the only thing left to do is to see if it does anything. <laughs> and then we've still got to do the top of the play field. We've still got to fix whatever's wrong with it whenever we try to play it. Uh, and we've still got to uh, do some cosmetic stuff. So I'll lay the play field down, and then we'll try to turn it on and see if this thing will start. So we haven't done the play field yet. Usually you wouldn't test these uh, with the old rubber rings on it because of things like this. See how the ring is dried out and it's made it where the, it's unplayable like this, but it's made it where the switches don't touch right. Sometimes it goes the other way. It'll make it where a switch is stuck or something. But on this particular game, there's hardly anything to hit that's not a stand-up switch. There's hardly any rubber rings. Just interesting. Um, and we're not we're not really going to play it. We're just going to see if it starts. Yeah, even back here, there's some rollovers, but I messed with them when I did the underside of the play field. Um, all right, so let's turn it on and see if it does anything. All right, we already had the lights. So remember when I did the back box score reels and I said to leave them all off of zero so that you can see if they reset whenever you start the game. So now we're finally going to see if the score reels work. So I'll try hitting start, see if we get anything. So everything reset back to zero. It says we're tilted, so that might not be good. We're on ball one. 
and it kicked the ball out, but we're probably tilted. Yeah, we're tilted. Also, it says ball in play number two, so that's not right either. So let's see if the ball will hang itself up. We also don't have flipper rubbers on it, so we're not going to actually play it. It moved to ball three, but we're still tilted. That buzzing noise, who knows what that is. It may be the, uh, maybe the, remember, I think this is supposed to go to one or something. Ball four. Ball five didn't light up. I haven't done the lights in the back box yet. We're still tilted. Let me see if I can figure out what's making the buzzing noise. What are we hearing? What's so loud down here? Oh. It's the tilt relay. Okay. So the noise that we are hearing is the tilt relay. Why is the tilt relay on? It's because yesterday I was showing somebody how the tilt works and I adjusted the damn tilt bob all the way up. <laughs> ah. Loosen that back down. So let's try this again. Okay, so I adjusted the tilt relay back. That got the buzzing stop. I mean, I adjusted the tilt switch. Looks like it's trying to score a little bit. We definitely got some issues. That was it counting down the bonus it looks like. We got a thousand points. It says ball three. Thousand points. Okay, so we're getting there, people. So we finally got the bottom of the playfield done. We got the inside of the cabinet done. We got the back glass, the back box done. So next, we need to clean the playfield. So yet another video of cleaning the playfield, and I've got a special surprise coming for these for this horrible wear here. If you didn't see the other videos, this playfield, someone has put mylar over the wear, and it looks god awful. And I can't take the mylar off because the condition of the playfield is not good enough to really let you take it off. I've never successfully done that. You can do it with heat, you can do it with cold, but every time I do it, it rips all the paint off the playfield. So I'm not even going to try it this time. But i got to make it look better. So i got something special coming for that. And then we have some, some paint work up here to do. And I will be doing that. So that will be on our next video. So Hope you enjoyed it so far. We're getting there on it. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. We're limping it along. We'll have it playable here pretty soon. I guess we're... Oh, I didn't try the flippers. Let me see if the flipper works. Flip, flip. Flip, flip. Boy, they look strong, don't they? So hopefully you enjoyed it. I think we're getting to the point where it's limping along now. Uh, so in the next video, we'll do the play field, and we'll do a video where we troubleshoot all of the scoring and the play field and see if everything works and... Uh, work through the schematics if something doesn't work. But give us a thumbs up for filming it. Make sure to check out our brother's channel, My Brother Donnie. I'm over there with him all the time doing cool stuff. It has nothing to do with arcade games, though. So it's usually working on vehicles or uh, houses or buildings and crazy things that uh, he gets into. He has a very adventurous life. My Brother Donnie. Go check that out. And by the way, thank you to the hundreds of people that have subscribed to him. Um, Everybody's over there. If you're not over there, I guess you're just not cool enough. But we're having a good time over on his channel, too. And then also, thank you to everybody that has been using our Amazon links. A lot of people have been doing that lately, and we really appreciate it. If you click our link below to Amazon in your country, uh, Amazon gives us a royalty for anything you decide to buy on Amazon. Uh, doesn't have to be something that we sent you there. What we tried to do was send everybody to a, uh, a link of their country's flag, we thought that was kind of cool. 
Um, so, uh, but you can go on there and buy anything, and it gives us a little royalty since we sent you there. Uh, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. It's been picking up lately, actually, so thank you. I guess more and more people have been doing it. Thank you, thank you. All around the world. I think we just signed up for Australia, but I don't know if it, if it works yet, but you can try it. But uh, thank you to everybody that's been doing that, and leave your comments below. Let us know what you think so far, and let me know what you think. Should I leave these flash bulbs in the back glass? I'm kind of thinking I might. What do you think? You know, I'm not a modder. I usually don't do that. But somebody went through a lot of trouble to do that, and it looks kind of cool. It looks kind of cool. I might leave it. So leave your comments, let us know what you think, and I will see you on the next video.